All right, so if anybody's watched any of my videos, um, you probably noticed the, the common theme is uh, depression, suicide, uh, topics of those natures. Um, because my goal here, um, even if, if you know, it doesn't reach a mass amount of people watching, if I can help one person um, understand a little more about depression, if I can reach out to somebody who may be suffering from depression, who hasn't got the help they need because they are afraid of the, the stigma, or maybe they don't even really think they are depressed, um, they just they just don't know what, what the feelings they have are. And maybe listening to stories from somebody who's had some similar experiences, maybe that will help them take the next step to get the help that they need. Um, that's my goal. That ultimately, that's my goal. I would like to help somebody. If I feel if I can help one person, then all of my struggles, everything that I've been through, um, will mean something. It will be worth it. It won't just be some lost soul, so to speak, um, is how I tend to feel most of the time. Uh, so what I really want to get into today is my personal experiences with depression, how my depression hits me. Um, and before I go into talking about that, I want to, I want to clarify a few things. Um, as I've talked to some people, uh, being so open about this, um, a lot of people don't really understand because they've never dealt with depression. Um, depression, a lot of times is coincided with sadness. Yes, depression is sadness. But that's not all it is, okay? Uh, I, being from bipolar, uh, which when I was diagnosed, it was called manic depression. And what that means is, uh, and it's the exact same thing, um, they just gave it a nice shiny name because manic depression sounds really um, bad, I suppose. Uh, whereas bipolar disorder, it, it's got a little prettier bow on top of it. It means the same thing. The bipolar is the two op the polar opposites, uh, the up and the down. Uh, the manic de and the depression is, if you don't know what mania is, mania is a, an intense feeling that uh, things are better than they are. When you are manic, your feelings are here. So when you feel joy, love, any of that, it's extremely, it's an extremely high feeling. Um, and it has no ceiling. I mean, you can, you can tell you, you feel unstoppable when you're manic. When things are going your way and you're hitting on all cylinders, it's like it's never going to end. The problem with that is it always ends. It comes crashing down. That brings you to the depression part, to the lows. Okay? The lows are the same as the mania, the same as the highs. When you hit that low spot, it takes forever. Seems like forever to get out of it. Um, it, it's not like a typical sadness, like you would, like a lot of people, uh, equate sadness to, you know, a heartbreak and then you get over it. Uh, you, you know, um, the depression, my depression, you know, um, it, it, it just leaves me completely drained. I, I want to say that there are, there are some aspects of, aspects of depression that are the same for, for pretty much everyone who suffers. Um, how we handle it is a little bit different because we, we're not all the same. Um, and a lot of people that I talk to that don't really understand the depression, they, 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 they can't wrap their head around what could be so bad. And, and that's where, where the problem and the misunderstandings come because everybody's had a bad day. Okay, everybody has issues. Everybody watching this video, um, everybody knows somebody. Every person alive has issues. Okay, how we deal with those issues, that's what creates our character. That's what makes us us. Um, some people have issues and they fly off the handle. Some people have issues and they handle it like a boss. Um, now, I want to talk about me personally how the depression and my issues, they all coincide. Uh, because there are 
a lot of factors that mitigate how I feel day to day. Um, my and 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 also to preface, you know, we've all made those jokes about bipolar. You know, at, at, they must be bipolar because one minute they're happy and the next minute they're sad. That that's how it works. You know, everything could be going great and something could happen to you. You could you could hear a, a song that reminds you of someone. Um, you could go by a place where something bad happened to you. You can you know you can see something. You can just think about something. And go from being perfectly fine to, uh, you know, bawling uncontrollably to, you know, uh, being suicidal to, you know, just shutting everyone out and just wanting to go home and just curl up in the dark in your room. Those are just a few of the ways that people deal with it. Um, my depression has been with me um, as long as I can remember uh, since I was at least 12. Um, and it's probably longer than that. That's just as far back as my memory goes. Um, and during that time, uh, suicide has been a very big part of my life. It has been with me for all the good and all the bad that has ever happened in my life. Um, it is somewhat of a crutch. Uh, it started out as suicidal ideations, just thinking about it. Um, what would happen if I died? Um, you know, what if I was walking down the street and I stepped in front of this car and I was hit as a 12, 13 year old boy? Um, you know, what if I fell down the stairs or fell off a roof or what if I drowned? Um, everywhere I went, everything I did revolved around death. And then as I got older, the uh, the ideations turned more to actions and I started cutting about the time I was 15, 16 years old. Uh, if you don't know what that means, cutting is where you take a razor blade or a knife. I don't know if you can see. Um, yeah, there's some scars in here. I've been trying to cover these up with tattoos because that's very unattractive. Um, and what you do is you take a knife, a razor blade, something sharp, and you, you slice at parts of your body. Um, generally, in my, my experience for me, um, when I started cutting on my arms, it was to find some attention because I wasn't getting any positive attention, a little negative attention ever hurt. Um, I felt inadequate. Um, I was short, I'm still short. Uh, but I was really short as a kid. Um, I wore glasses, and I wore those big, thick glasses. Those you could see the future glasses. You know that didn't help my self-image. Definitely didn't help with any kind of ladies. Um, and I was an easy target for bullies. Um, I can hold my own. You know, I can talk. I can talk just as much shit as anybody. Probably more than a lot of people. Uh, but it still didn't help my appearance. It didn't help the way I felt about myself. Um, and already being depressed, uh, my self-image is very low, even to this day. Um, and I'm gonna get into that into a lot more detail here in a few minutes. Um, so uh, with the cutting, uh, you, what you do is you, you cut and then it opens up these endorphins. On my arms, like I say, it was for attention at first. Um, but I've got some scars on my legs, my chest, my stomach, the ones I didn't want people to see, the ones that weren't for attention, the ones that were to alleviate the pain. And when I say to alleviate the pain, what that means is, is that there's this internal pain inside of you and you cannot get rid of it. You can't, you just, it just, it just burns through your soul through your, your, your very core, the very fiber of your being is just this intense internal pain and you have nowhere to put it. And so what you do is you cut yourself and then you, you bleed out and then the pain and the endorphins open up and then it takes your mind away from inside and it focuses on the external pain. And 
you feel good for a few minutes and then you left with a lasting scar. I still have scars from when I was a kid. I haven't cut myself in over, God, over 10 years. And even to this day, to this day when I get depressed, I think about it. Um, I, I, I get the tattoos now. I try to find a very painful place to get a tattoo to, uh, it works the same way. It looks a little nicer, it's a little more acceptable. Um, plus, I mean, I like tattoos. Uh, I know it's not gonna fix my problems, but it's it's still the same thing. It, kids, it's a very poor, poor choice of a way to deal with your issues, okay? It, it doesn't help your depression, it doesn't it doesn't make the pain go away. I mean, there's 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 only so much you can cut, there's only so much skin, and it lasts forever. And when you get older, all it does is remind you of a time you don't want to think about. Um, so, uh, it's a it's a it's a poor choice. It really is. Um, so don't if you can avoid doing it, don't do it. You know, if you feel like you need to get some help, parents, if you see your kids with with inex unexplainable scars, cuts, scratches. Uh, dig a little deeper, you know, uh, take, take a little more active approach. So back, back to topic. Um, my depression, it, it, it hits me when it hits me, it, it hits me hard. Um, I personally don't eat, uh, you know, I've gone, I've gone almost two weeks before without, without, with just enough sustenance to, uh, you know, keep me going. Um, I don't sleep. Sleep becomes very, very difficult for me. Um, I'll sleep a little bit, two, three hours, wake up, and then be up until I can fall asleep again. Uh, I'll run my body ragged just to get sleep because I, I don't, I just lay there and think about things. I, I overthink on everything. I think about conversations that I've had in the past. I think about conversations with people that aren't in my life anymore, uh, people that have passed away. Um, every possible negative thing that has ever happened in my life, that is what I think about. And I, and I, and I try to get it out of my head, but my, my head just brings it back. Uh, my brain, it, it, it won't listen to me, uh, and it just throws all this at me. Um, so, if you've watched my other video, um, you'll understand if you haven't, go watch the video where I talk about medications, antidepressants, uh, mood stabilizers, uh, and that'll explain a little bit better of why I'm not on the medication. Uh, what, what I need is I need my brain to be rewired. And, and as of now, the only thing I know that will rewire it is the medication, which I refuse to take for the reasons listed in the, in the other video. And that's, it's, it's detrimental to my health and my safety. I know that. Um, it will probably cost me my life. And I also know that I'm fully aware. Um, but my problem is, is that I have such low self-esteem, such low self-image um, from years of self-hatred, uh, self-abuse, you know, I've, I've destroyed my body with drugs and alcohol. I have, I have battered myself uh, mentally, self-deprecating humor. Uh, I have completely and totally just given up on myself. Um, but if you are a person in my life, I would do anything for you. I treat everyone in my life better than I treat myself. I treat myself to a lot of really thing, fun things that I enjoy, but I don't think very highly of myself. Most of the things that I do, I do alone. Um, I alienate everyone. I assume that everyone hates me. I automatically, even my friends, I figure if anyone talks to me, it's because they got no one else to talk to. Um, if anyone has anything to do with me, I assume it's because they need something. Uh, I, I, I don't go out of my way to see anyone because I don't think anyone likes me. Uh, this is what I live with. Every, this is how I live my life. This is uh, exactly 
this is and this is daily. This isn't this isn't one of those things that you know every now and then. Uh, I mean, I, I've pretty much even at forty years old isolate myself from friends and family. I, I I've gotten so used to doing things on my own that I just I just go. I go on vacations by myself. I do whatever I want, but I do it by myself. Um, and that's not a healthy coping mechanism by any means, um, to an extent, because it is, sometimes you just got to do what you want to do. You can't wait on others to, to, to live your life. Um, but I'm, I'm sure it would be nice to go places with people and do things with other people and, and have enjoyable times. Um, but it is what it is. I, like I say, every day I assume that everyone hates me. I assume nobody wants to talk to me, nobody wants to be around me. I don't think I'm that good of a person. Now, on the flip side of that, I really know I'm not that bad. I know I'm not that bad. I'm a lot of fun to be around. I always got a joke to tell. I always got some laughs to hand out. Um, I know that not everyone hates me. Uh, but my brain tells me otherwise. I know that my life is not that bad few things I could do, tighten up a little bit on this and that and everything would be good. My brain tells me that I'm a failure, I'm an idiot, and I can't do anything right. No matter, no matter how much I do in my life, I will never be good enough. Um, I will never be a good enough friend. I will never be a good enough father. I will never be a good enough boyfriend. I goddamn sure ain't never gonna be a husband. Um, I'll never be good enough for anyone, no matter, and, and I will give it my all, but I just, in my mind, what I do is not enough, so I do too much. I overcompensate. That's, that's how my depression is. That's what my depression makes me feel like. Um, I, I live, I live with that knowledge every day. I, I fight a war inside my head daily. Daily. Some days are good. Some days are bad. And now, this is when the depression part, this is the part that people don't understand. Um, you can go months with a depressive episode. I mean, you can just be miserable for months. But the older you get the better you are at hiding things. Um, the quicker you are with a joke, the faster you, the faster you pull out a smile, the, the, the better you are at hiding how you really feel. Um, because you, you know that it scares people away. It, 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 it unnerves a lot of people when you start talking about being depressed, when suicide comes up, when, you know, I, I don't understand what I'm gonna do because depression leaves you feeling empty. It leaves you feeling hopeless. Hopeless is the worst feeling in the world that no matter what you do, you don't know if you'll ever feel good again. Uh, and, and people tell you all the time, oh, it'll be okay tomorrow. It'll, it'll get better. It'll get better. Well, when you suffer from major depression, which is, uh, I suffer from major depression far more than I suffer from mania. The major depression, it, it takes away your will. To, 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 I mean, sometimes you just don't even want to fight. You don't want to get out of bed. One of the worst feelings in the entire world is not wanting to get out of bed, to, to force yourself to get up, to do the things you have to do. To get up and make yourself go to work, to make yourself take a shower, to make yourself get dressed to force yourself to have to just get up is, is physically, emotionally, mentally draining. And I know a lot of people will never have to experience that. And, and I think that's wonderful. I wish 
fewer people had to experience how taxing it can be to have to get to have to force yourself to do anything especially the things that you're supposed to do the normal everyday stuff that everybody does every day that's a hard it's it's, it's hard to understand if you've never been there um now with with my depression uh, like I say, I, I'll go. I can go weeks without eating, lose weight, look like I'm looks like I'm back on the drugs. Not on the drugs, you know, clean and sober. Um, but you you just don't eat. I don't. I don't eat. I don't sleep. So I look wore out. The the bags under the eyes. You know, uh, the the rapid weight loss. It looks like I'm doing drugs, but I'm really just depressed. Um. There are other things uh, that contribute anxiety my anxiety when I get anxious everybody gets anxious about something every now and then I don't suffer from anxiety uh, but things come up and I get anxious everyone has that where they get anxious my anxiety turns into a very severe depression and I get anxious I start overthinking and then I start to get depressed and then I start to to, to screw things up my last relationship was completely screwed up over anxiety because I had something coming up and it was it, it, every time this, this thing happens, it makes me anxious. It's almost over, but it wasn't at the time and I got anxious and I just, I couldn't focus and I couldn't take care of things like I should. I sought this reassurance, but I went about it the wrong way and it cost me everything. But, you know, that's part of the depression. You're going to lose. You're gonna, if you suffer from depression, you're going to lose more than you're going to win. But I can promise you, you appreciate the wins. You do appreciate the wins. Because they're few. And they are hard fought. Um, My depression also came with a lot of self-medication. A lot. Uh, which I know a lot of other people self-medicate too. And when I quit self-medicating, that's when it got hard. Because that's when I had to deal with things. And I've never dealt with anything in my life um, except for with suicide that's the go to and there was a period in my life where the only reason I was alive was because I knew I didn't have to be I was always one bad day away from not being here anymore. I found solace in my death. My death was the only thing that kept me alive. Now, as, as contradictory as that is, what it means is, is that I lived for about four years, maybe longer, knowing that at any time I could take my life and I didn't have to be here. I didn't live my life. I just kind of went through the motions for years, years. That's how I lived. That was my, that was my, that was my go-to. I'm like, I can, I can kill myself at any time. So it doesn't matter. Um, I know I said I wasn't going to make these long videos of me rambling. Uh, this one's a lot longer than anything I've done because it's, it's gonna be one of the hardest ones. Um, I know I've got another one coming, two more coming that are gonna be extremely hard. They're gonna be hard for people that I know to watch. Um, but I've got, I've got some more coming and I hope that this will help you. I'll drop my Instagram in the, in the, in the description if I can help you in any way, if I can help you understand, or if I can, you know, just talk to you, we don't have to talk about depression. We don't talk about suicide. We'll talk about whatever you want. 
Um, if you just need somebody to talk to, hit me up, reach out. Um, I just hope that I can do some good before I die. Which, when you live with depression, could be any day. So, I hope this reaches someone. I hope it helps someone. Um, and I hope that you get the help that you need before it's too late. Before you end up in a situation like I am. As always, thanks for watching.